This is Tales from the Pros, where business leaders and influencers share their stories of inspiration, struggles, and successes. And I'm your host, Michael Giorgio. Hey, everyone. Welcome to Tales from the Pros. This is Michael Giorgio, your host and co-founder of Imagine Ovation. My special guest with me here today is known as the Boss and Heels, teaching how to empower you to create your confidence and live life to its fullest and ultimately achieving success. Coming from humble beginnings, she has become a best-selling author, keynote speaker, entrepreneur, and founder of Boss and Heels, having successfully climbed the corporate ladder for nearly 20 years. This inspiring thought leader is one of the few women to break the glass ceiling and claim her spot in the C-suite. Please welcome the amazing Heather Monahan. Heather, I really appreciate your time and, and chatting with me today. Thank, thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So, you know, Heather, I, I love, um, you know, I love storytelling. I love learning about how people got to where they are today and, and their struggles and successes and, and just, you know, the, the steps they took to, to get to a, a great place. And, um, you know, it, for you being a leader in your space, uh, you, you know, I mentioned, you know, just a second ago that you came from humble, humble beginnings. So can you tell us a little bit about that story and how you got to this successful point in sure. your life? Sure. So I grew up in Worcester, Massachusetts. I was one of four kids. My mom was a single mom and she worked three jobs and we definitely struggled when I was a kid. So I learned at an early age that, you know, I needed to work hard and I started with paper routes and then bussing tables, waiting tables, bartending all through high school and college and ultimately landed out of school with the Gala Winery and I joined their sales program became their number one salesperson within the first year. And then I left the wine business to go to the radio business and start out as a seller there. Within the first year, became the number one seller on the sales team. And I was given an equity partnership opportunity in Saginaw, Michigan to move and lead a company uh, valued at $25 million. And in under three years, I turned that property into a $55 million property uh, made a lot of money at a very young age and made a name for myself in the radio business as someone who could drive revenue, lead teams, and and really bring some massive results. So I left there and went to a publicly traded company in Florida, which I led that sales organization for 14 years, becoming the chief revenue officer. And after being promoted three times and winning a number of different awards. I ended up getting fired when the CEO became ill and he elevated his daughter to replace him. So I took that opportunity two years ago to go to work for myself. I wrote and self-published my first book, Confidence Creator, which trumped Trump for number one in business biography and has been a really massive success story. During that time, I learned to sell books. You need to get out and speak. So I hit the speaker trail and I ended up getting picked up by all the major speaker bureaus, Big Speak, GDA Speakers, Harry Walker Speaker Agency, and APB Speakers, and really turned that into my primary business. And during that time, I signed with Podcast One and launched my own show, Creating Confidence with Heather Monahan. Wow. Well, what a story. So so you really just left, you know, you, you were, you know, I'm sure you were very well for yourself financially and you were involved in all this, um, you know, you had a great career. So is is the, 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 the biggest reason you left um, that last job was because of that, re- that, that replacement that you said your boss um, uh, replaced with his with his daughter. Yeah, and correct? she fired me. I didn't. I didn't choose to leave. Oh, wow. oh, okay, okay. Oh, wow. So it kind of it kind of happened for a reason, right? Because look at you now. You have you know these books, and you've been speaking you know around the world, and and, and helping you know a lot of a lot of women and men, I'm sure. Um, so, like with that being said, I know you talk a lot about confidence. So, Heather, what you know, I think all of us really struggle with confidence. You know, I have in the past. You know, me being bullied as a, as a kid for 15 years. I, I, I had very little confidence. I had to build my own confidence in certain ways. Um, you know, how do you really create confidence in yourself when something has gone wrong, has gone on for so long that it has really become the new norm? My gosh, that's a line from my TED talk that you just gave. Do you realize that? <laughs> no, I didn't yes. realize that. that's crazy. Uh, so, in my TED talk, I actually say exactly that what you just said that it's so difficult when 
your new norm has become being berated by others and and not standing up for yourself. How can you create confidence? So in my TED Talk, I share the five-step process that I implemented to create confidence, which is essentially I was in advertising for over 20 years. I just took the philosophy Mm -hmm. that works for McDonald's and every other major advertiser and I put it to work for me. So, you know, number one, choose the right platform to run your ad campaign. Number two, choose powerful messaging. Number three, find a jingle or a music bed that elicits emotion and memory. Number four, have a call to action to convert the opportunity. And number five, you know, you, you want to pair a visual image with this audio campaign if you really want it to explode. So, you know, that was one of the ways I I truly ran a personal ad campaign for myself to myself to elicit confidence within me. But in addition to that, you know, I, in my book, Confidence Creator, I have 43 different chapters with 43 different tactics and strategies you can implement to create confidence within you because People have different reasons why they're lacking confidence, whether it be you're not following your passion and you're in accounting when you really need to be a painter and you're denying that to yourself. Or it could be that you're surrounded by a villain and you need to fire that villain. Or it could be that you're running a negative tape in your head to yourself and you're the one really holding yourself back. So I outline all the different strategies so that whatever the issue is that you're up against in that moment, you're able to tackle it head on. Wow. And how did you come up with that? I like how you're kind of using the advertising metaphors towards yourself and creating confidence. Like how how did you come up with that? How was it? How did you just? Was it just a an epiphany that you had to say, oh, "This is when I, I want to create this ad campaign for myself to do this for myself and and see see what happens." Like what inspired you to to come up with that that. Well, the headquarters, the office is almost three hours from where I live. So anytime I was driving over there, I would be thinking through how I didn't want to see this woman. She was the interim CEO before she became the CEO. When she was the interim CEO, she couldn't fire me, but she made it known that she hated me. And so I would constantly be forced to sit in a meeting with her as well as the other executive team. And she would ignore me, you know, treat me in a very negative, passive, aggressive way that it became clear as I sat quietly in my seat and did nothing, I was feeling worse and worse about myself and she was growing in strength. And so I would drive home and think to myself, I can't live like this. I can't afford to, I'm a single mom. I can't afford to lose my job. I need to pay my mortgage. You know, what, what options do I have? And I felt powerless. So on one of those rides, I just thought to myself, what there's got, I believe that there's always a solution for any problem. I just haven't found it yet. So I was thinking, racking my brain. Okay, what solution is there that I'm not seeing? There's got to be one. And it literally popped into my head as I had the radio on and the advertisements came on. And I thought, oh my gosh, I, I'm an expert at advertising. I've been doing this for 20 years, making hundreds of millions of dollars for other people. Why don't I just leverage this methodology that I use for my clients to create success for my clients? Why don't I do that for myself? And in that moment, you know, I decided to put my expertise to work for myself. And wouldn't you know, it worked. And, you know, over a 30 day period, very quickly, I was able to change my thought process. I was able to sell myself on my ad campaign, which essentially was that when I would feel fear, that meant fear is a green light, take action now, step into it. And instead of sitting quietly at the table, when she would ignore me, I started raising my hand and saying, hi, good morning. I'm over here. You missed me. And I started shifting the power in the room. I started feeling and becoming more confident. And I really changed the dynamic. Now, ultimately, that woman ended up firing me when she became CEO. But I was Mm. able to put myself in a much more powerful position to stand up to her when she tried to get me to sign, basically sign all my rights away. When she fired me, she had asked me to to sign an agreement that she would give me money for, basically do a deal with the devil. She'd give me money if I would sign away my rights to ever talk about what happened while I was at the company. And because I had been working on my confidence and building my confidence, I knew that I'm, I'm not a sellout and it was time for me to stand up for myself. And I pushed that opportunity away and I walked out that door. So you, you initially, you stepped into your power. Oh yeah, a hundred percent. Yeah, that's awesome. I love it. Yeah, I, I listened to. Um, I don't know if you know a, um, a another lady. Her name is uh, G- Gabby Bernstein. I know who she is. I don't know her. 
Oh yeah. But yeah, she talks a lot about that. Um, and, and I listened to a, a lot of her talks as well. So when, when you talk, it, it kind of m- reminds me a little bit of, of her. So it's, it's a compliment. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, but, uh, so in regards to confidence, you know, is building confidence developed more by action or is it more of a mental game or is it both? It depends on the person, right? So I'm a, we're all different kinds of people. There's three different ways anyone can create confidence, whether it be belief systems, taking action or accessing knowledge, right? So it depends on what you are able to gravitate towards that works for you. I'm an action driven person. So action will always be the easiest thing for me to gravitate towards. So for me, creating confidence absolutely comes from taking action. Some people do not like taking action. It freezes them up and beliefs is the easier thing for them to work on. So those people should gravitate towards different, you know, affirmations, working on rewriting the tape in their mind. And then other people really like learning and knowledge-based applications are the way for them to create confidence, whether it be listening to certain podcasts, reading certain books, you know, so there's plenty of different ways to do it. It's really about you, what your holdbacks are and what you gravitate towards. We all learn differently. Yeah. It's cool that you say that that everyone's so different because I'm, I'm thinking about what I, what I took from, what it took for me to um, get more confidence. I think it was, it was a, it was mental. Um, you know, it's my belief system, uh, you know, for, for at least for me personally, like I, I do believe in God. So I pray a lot, all that, that helps as well. Meditation helps. Um, and also action. Um, for me, if I don't see, if I don't do any, if I don't execute anything new and I don't see progress, um, you know, I know Tony Robbins talks a lot about progress and, and, um, then I, I it's hard to build confidence for me. I, I want to work hard and do the best that I can. And, and, um, and while I'm doing that, I want to inspire and help other people. So that, that, that's kind of helped, you know, at least work for me, but, you know, in your experience, what were what Heather? What were really the steps you took to define your purpose? I know you mentioned purpose before and self worth. Were there any steps that you took um, aside from kind of just leaving? You know, well, I know you, you said you got fired, but starting your own your own thing and following your passion. Is there for others? What are do you believe there's certain steps to define your purpose and self? Yeah, I mean, there's a number of different ways to go about it. My journey to find my purpose goes back. A- six, maybe nine years ago now, I was in a meeting with a mentor of mine in New York and he was telling me I had to pick my head up. He said, you're only living a very small life right now. You're running your company and all you think of is running the company and how can you drive revenue? He said, you need to stop that and you need to put yourself first, pick your head up and look around the world, not your job, not this company, look around the world and think about what is bigger that's out there for you? He said, because you're bigger than what you're doing. And that I sat with that information for maybe even a year. And one day I was asked to join a charity. And I thought, you know what? This is something different. It's outside of my world. This is kind of tapping into what my advisor and mentor had told me to do. Okay, I'll, I'll do it. Even though I didn't have time to do it, that's for sure. But it was going to introduce me to a new world. So I think that you know, taking opportunities, even when you don't know where they're going to take you, that's very helpful in creating new contacts, networks, perspective. And what happened through me working for that charity was they asked me to speak. And I started speaking publicly for them. Now, I spoke in the radio business for years, but I didn't realize that was something that could ever be a talent or a skill that people valued. It was just part of my job. So I I discredited it now that I was in this new world, the charity world, and I was getting asked to speak. I was seeing that there was huge value and a lot of praise and accolade that I got for that. That started opening my mind up to there's something here. I'm really good at this. Why haven't I been noticing that this is a differentiator for me? And I started gravitating towards more speaking events. And then someone said to me, you should take a stand-up comedy class to really challenge yourself to grow. I didn't want to do it. And so what that meant to me is if I'm resisting this, there's a reason why I'm going to have to make myself do it. And what I learned from that stand-up comedy class is I have a superpower and it was speaking because I could stand on that stage ad nauseum and speak forever and nobody else in the class could do that. So those strange, Mm -hmm. you know, different experiences taught me that there was something really powerful inside of me that I had never noticed before. So it all started with me putting myself 
you know, picking my head up outside of my little world that I was stuck in and starting to push beyond that little world into new worlds, first being the charity world, then next being that stand-up comedy world. And those experiences really enlightened me to start seeing that there I had superpowers inside of me that I had been ignoring that nobody else had been shining a light on and I had been devaluing. So that started me down a different path. For other people, you know, so number one, put yourself into into different environments and and pick your head up outside of the the small world you're living in and start looking beyond it and, and pushing yourself to access different industries, areas, and contacts. But another way is to reach out to 10 people in your life and send them an email, a text, or a phone call and say, listen, I'm doing some, you know, work into myself right now. Here's what I want to know from you. What's unique, special, or different about me? As I define my unique value proposition, I'd love your perspective and help. And you're going to get back 10 emails from people giving you exactly what you haven't been able to see about yourself. And maybe they're going to tell you, you know, you're the most energizing person I've ever met. You can lift people up in a second. Or maybe they're going to say, you are so detail-oriented and smart. And when I'm stuck with a problem, I go to you. But you'll see a pattern that will show up that maybe you haven't been noticing about yourself. And when you find that, there's going to be clues in there that will help steer you to what's unique and different about you. And another way is to look at the things that you love to do as a child. When I was a child, this is before anyone told you, you can't do that. That's, you know, a dumb idea or you shouldn't. That's not a career. When I was a child, I loved to perform. So I wanted to be in plays. Well, that was until one day when I was in school, someone said, well, you can't do that for a living. That's not going to make you money. And so mm-hmm. I walked yeah. away from that. Right. So now I, I'm on stages every week for a living. That's what I get paid to do, right? So here's the thing. Look back at your childhood. Look back and think, what were the things I loved to do before people told me I couldn't do them? Uh, I'm just I'm just kind of taking everything in that you just said. Um, Wow, I love it. And you know what's funny, Heather, that we're so – I feel like most of us are so stuck in our own little worlds when we're working, you know, either, even if we're working for our own business or even working for somebody else, we're stuck in our, in our own world. And we don't, we don't understand that the powers that we actually have and the skills that we have, because we know what we know. We don't realize that, that what we know could, could teach and inspire and help so many people. You know what I mean? Like even, even like for, for me with like marketing and, and storytelling, certain things, you know, I, I don't realize like, oh, I know what I know and I, th- I know I'm good at it, but will other people find value in that if I try to teach them and educate them and, and even speak on, t- speak on stage, inspire them like you do? It's pretty crazy. I love how you said that. You need to get out of that, like what your mentor mentioned, and get out of that, that mental state and, and shift. And think about like, listen, it's a big world. A lot of people could learn. You know that there's a really easy way to make that shift. And it's to say, when I'm thinking like that, which is what you just described, I don't know, is there any value in what I have? That's selfish. That's about being about you. If you shift from being selfish instead to serving others and think, hey, there's a chance I could affect one person. If this message that I have, and I do this to myself anytime I second guess myself, if there's a chance that my message could affect one person, And I remember who I used to be when I didn't have confidence, when I didn't have mentors, when I felt alone. Wow, if I can share a message that could help that young girl, that young guy, that person, then it's selfish of me not to share it. I'm going to make myself take this chance. And when you ask and challenge yourself in that regard, how could you not share it, right? So it's not up to you to judge who needs your information. It's up to you to put it out there to make the world a better place. I love it. I love it. Thank you for sharing that. And and any advice on any advice, Heather, on how you use your purpose and passion to really create a personal brand or leverage an existing company brand? So what I mean by an existing company brand is not everyone wants to create a personal brand, but some of us that or some people out there that that work for another company and they love what they do. They love the business and they want to be like a, the face for the business. How do they use their purpose and passion to to really create that brand? How, how do they do that? What's, is there something that you did? Um, obviously you have your own personal brand. So what did you do to, to really do, to really, you know, uh, build that, that audience and, and, and yeah. Engagement? So four years ago, back when I was still in corporate America, I 
had started down this path, as I mentioned, you know, six, some, seven years ago to start looking deeper into myself and living bigger, not just in my small company world. So that started me down a path that took years, but eventually led me to four years ago where I, one day it was the end of, I guess it must've been going into 2016. So it was 2015. And I said, going into the new year, one of my goals is going to be to elevate myself, to tell my story, to launch my brand so I can have a voice to help others. And in doing so, you need to identify, again, I was in marketing and advertising for a long time, so I knew how to do this. So I basically sat down with a good friend of mine who was a CMO, and she and I, as personal friends, just kind of started sketching out what are the brand pillars that represent Heather Monaghan. And to me, that you know is transparency, being authentic, being a leader, being someone who is you know wants to share and help others. And we just started sketching out basically like a whiteboard how you would do for a client. You know, what are these brand pillars that this brand is going to stand for and, and really stand on? And and you want to ask yourself what are those keys to who you are? And they can change and evolve. It's not something that has to. This is it and it forever because those are the things that you know that. <laughs> freezes people like, oh, I'm stuck on my brand pillars. No, who cares? You know, just bang out a bunch of ideas, lead forward with those because you want to cross-reference your content, your messaging against what those brand pillars are and be consistent with them. But it's okay to evolve. You know, when I first started my brand four years ago, I didn't know I was going to speak about confidence. I didn't know I was going to write a book about confidence, right? Mm -hmm. So I've changed and evolved my brand over the past two years immensely but back four years right. ago, I didn't know any of that was going to happen. So the key is to take action and launch it. You can evolve it and grow it. I actually work with a company called Brand Builders that specializes in this. So if you are afraid that you don't know how to do it, you, there's plenty of people out there. Brand Builders is a great company to work with. My friend Rory was on my podcast. I do a whole show about this, about how to launch a personal brand. So there's a, a lot of available information in the world that you can access, companies you can pay to help and you can hire to help you do this, or you can do it on your own. But the key is this. Everyone's got a personal brand. It, it's up to you if you want to be the one directing it or you want to be the one responding to it. And by that, I mean, I had a personal brand before I, I launched mine four years ago. It was what other people said about me when I wasn't around. Now, I decided to take the pen and write the narrative myself. And that was a massive shift. It, it angered my employer at the time, right? Which eventually yeah, led me yeah. down a path where I got fired. But in the end, by being authentic and real and holding that pen, I I took charge of where I was going instead of being batted around by where life took me. Yeah. And on a marketing perspective, Heather, what were some of the steps that you took to build your audience? I mean, I, I see you have a, you, you have a following, you have a community, a lot, a lot of people that you're helping around the world and inspiring and, and even through your courses and all of that. What did it, what, were there certain um, strategies or tactics that, that you implemented and executed that really helped you on, and it could be social media perspective or it could even be just going to events, but anything that, that works for you that was yeah, effective. So first of all, and this is key, I launched my personal brand four years ago. Instagram was so much more organic back then. Facebook didn't own Instagram back then, right? So here's the key takeaway right, there. Right. Start today because right now the platform that is so organic is LinkedIn and Facebook doesn't own it, yep. right? So right now, and my post that I, I posted last week about my TEDx talk, it garnered 850,000 views because I used the right um, hashtags. I used eight professional pictures. I was vulnerable in the post. So for me, that's the recipe of success on LinkedIn. And you learn this stuff by practicing. I have some posts I put up that get 2,000 views. And then I have some that have 850,000. Or actually, I have a couple of posts that have a million. So here's the thing. You need to be consistent. You need to post with frequency. Identify the platforms that are in growth phase. Right now, growing on Instagram is incredibly hard. They want you to pay to play. And I don't, mm -hmm. I have no interest in paying yeah. for, you know, to grow my audience. So gravitate towards the platforms that you don't have to pay. LinkedIn is a showstopper. You can create a massive audience within one year, even within a few months, if you're consistent you and, and show up as you. And some people will say this to me, well, that's easy for you to say, Heather, you have 20 plus years experience in sales and leadership. Well, yeah. let me tell you why I disagree with you. That's irrelevant. Yeah. So I could have started my brand when I was a brand new salesperson at the Gala Winery because I could have shared that story and what I was learning and the mistakes that I made. 
that's some might say that's even more interesting than hearing from an expert, someone who's been doing it for two decades, right? So wherever you are in your journey, shine a light on that, who you are. I I thought I got fired last week from my podcast company because inadvertently someone had mistaked my show for another person's show. They told an advertiser of mine, oh, we're not carrying Heather's show next year. That advertiser sent me that email. I went into a tailspin thinking I had just lost my show because I didn't have all the information yet, right? So I had to reach out to my podcast company, talk to them about it, and find out that was never about my show to begin with. So sometimes there's just misinformation out there in the world. We need to take a step back from it and say, okay, there are lessons to learn on anything. We can... I, I can be an expert in being a rookie. I can be an expert in showing them the crazy mistakes I make. And I posted about how I thought I got fired and what I learned from it. And that posted incredibly well. It doesn't have to be just about here's how you put together a business plan going into 2020 and here's <laughs> my expertise around it. No, you know, those are the posts that don't do incredibly well. The ones that do great are when you share your mistakes, your learnings and who you really are. And maybe it's just that you're scared to be posting and but you're doing it because you want to start growing and stepping into fears, how you're going to do that and you want to help others. You know, just be you, show up as you and be consistent with it and do it with frequency and you'll see the gains will come. Do you think that the message has to be consistent or do you like, like, for example, if, uh, if, if I love storytelling, I want to, I want to be able to build uh, an audience that basically can leverage their story, everything they went through, whether it's struggle, success, or both, um, and, and use it to, to achieve, uh, more greatness in their life. That's really what I, I want to do aside from, you know, I, I have a, a app development company, right? So I, that's what I want to do on a more of a personal level. So do you think that's something for, for other people listening to this you know, this episode that they need to be consistent with their, their driven purpose, what they love, what they want to do, what they want to portray to other people, or is it just being, even just having consistent content, like Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, don't, you know what uh, I mean? first of all, don't is overthink it, this. Okay. Number one, do not overthink okay. this. Just post. I mean, yeah. I post sometimes about my son. I have a 12 year old son. Is that consistent with being a business expert? No. But you know what? My son yeah. taught me a great lesson that I should write on the bottom of my shoes because I'm not going to feel confident all the time. And sometimes, you know, I might feel confident in the morning and that's when I should jump on it and leave myself reminders. So I share those stories because I think that I think that's great. And you know what? People might think it's great and it might serve part of my audience, but it's not up to me to judge or decide who it's going to serve or not serve. It's just about consistency in posting. And it doesn't have to be the same theme. You know, maybe I'll post this afternoon about a meeting I had yesterday where someone told me I'm taking the wrong strategy with my speaking engagements. I'm learning as I go. And I like sharing those stories. That's not the same as the post that I had about my son, which was positive and how to improve things. This was more of a, wow, I got some negative feedback today and it was hard to hear. Here's what I'm thinking about it. You know, how would you respond? So it, my posts are not the same. And if you go on LinkedIn and check out at Heather Monahan, you'll see they're all over the board. Sometimes I write articles. Yeah, I have, sometimes yeah. I write funny things. Sometimes yeah. I write in your face, bold things, but I'm very consistent with posting <laughs> and that's the key. That's good. That's good to hear. Cause uh, a lot of us overthink things and we have to, we always keep thinking of, Oh, strategy, strategy, strategy. And we get so consumed by it. And Okay. So post? that is a strategy. It's called not taking action. And that is not a good yeah. strategy because people will say to me, well, I'm stuck and I don't know which way to go. Well, that is your strategy then not doing anything. And that is a, an epic fail. You will fail with that strategy. So the next time you find yourself saying, oh, I'm paralyzed with fear. I don't know what to do. Know that you're implementing a strategy right now. Pull that strategy, fire it, get rid of it and take action on whatever the easiest way for you to move forward. Maybe it's just, you know, saying something, a one line that you think is funny, but put something out there because that will allow you to start creating momentum to move forward and, and do more. I see. And just be authentic Absolutely. and real with people. You know, that's so critical. Yep. Yep. I believe in that. Yeah. And, and, you know, Heather, we all, you know, go through a lot of insane struggles and obstacles. I know you mentioned a few earlier and, and uh, I noticed in, in one of your TED talks, you were talking about firing your villain. I love it, by the way. I really, really love what you said about that. 
Can you talk more about yeah, that? Yeah, so firing your villain is really one of the most powerful ways to set yourself up for success. And I did not know this. For a long time, I had a negative person in my space at work that would do anything to hold me back, to shut me down, you know, to set me up. And I always would think, I'll just ignore that person because – Obviously, she's beneath me. She's jealous, whatever. I'm just ignoring her. What I didn't realize was allowing a negative person to be in my space on a day-to-day basis was slowly chipping away at me. It was blocking me from positive opportunities and blocking me from success. And the minute that woman fired me, I actually had fired my villain. And by the time I got home, I started thinking, okay, what am I going to do? I'm going to post that I just got fired and I'm really hurting. And that post went viral. And so many people reached out trying to help me. And then I got on the Elvis Duran show. All these amazing things started happening that would have never happened if that negative person had still been blocking my space. So the minute you decide to, number one, identify who your villains are, we all have them. You know, some people, their family members, some people, it's their spouse, some people, it's a coworker, or maybe it's just a neighbor. But there's that person that gives you those negative looks, that says negative things, that's trying to hold you back either subtly or in your face. Those are your villains. And the minute you decide to protect yourself, put yourself first and fire those people from your life, you'll see some really positive things start happening. Wow. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's so great. Yeah, I, I, I know we all have villains. We need to to really just get rid of them and focus on ourselves and step into what makes us happy and, and what we feel is, um, you know, makes us powerful and that's going to help a lot of people. I love it. And, and you know, I, I, I mentioned storytelling a few times, you know, and I saw in some of your talks and just your content, you, you talk about your story and, and I, I think that's inspiring. How do you use storytelling, Heather, to build yourself uh, essentially provide value and inspire I others. think the whole concept of storytelling is overused. Here's the thing. I've been in sales yeah. my whole life. It's called selling. That's how I frame it up, right? People, it's yeah. like the yeah. new modern way of saying it is storytelling. So I've been in sales my whole life. The way I connect with people is I share my stories. If I'm in a sales presentation for an advertiser, you know, go back 10 years ago, I would share a story of another advertiser succeeding with the strategy I was sharing with them, right? So using story to sell is the way that I built my business and my career since I was 18 years old. So it's just essentially, you know, the best salespeople are the greatest storytellers. And the way that you learn how to to sell or the way that you learn how to tell your story is starting small and it can start with a neighbor for a coffee. And, you know, you'll see the minute you start sharing a story, people are engaged. They put themselves in that situation. Their mind starts, you know, taking that story on and they feel connected to you. So story is it just really, it's a way to connect with others, but it's also a great way to sell whatever product or service or yourself in any situation. It allows your message to really resonate with, with people. I mean, you're, at the end of the day, it's uh, business is about people. You're investing your Absolutely. time. Absolutely. In yeah. yeah. So uh, just to close things out, Heather, last three questions I have, I call them the three hows. So first one is, how do you define failure? Second is, how do you define your story in one sentence and in one word? And third is, how do you define success? All right, well, give, give them to me one at a time. What's the first one? Okay. How do I define failure? Failure is the starting point, right? So 99% of people in the world are not that successful. It's that top 1% that is. That top 1% keeps failing, but getting back up. You know, when I got fired, I could have just gone back to what I always knew known and, and that would have been an epic fail. But instead I decided to take a chance on me. It has not been smooth sailing. There's been countless times where my plan and strategy fell apart and, and I failed. I was, I partnered with Perry Ellis and then they let me go. And I had to decide, should I go back to corporate America or do I keep being an entrepreneur? I failed. I said, I'm getting back up again. And this time I'm going to have more revenue opportunities, more streams, more strategies, so that when one fails, it's okay. It's not going to be as hard a hit. And that's how I started building out my business. So failure is really the starting point for you to say, am I going to move forward and take this thing to the next level? Or am I just going to give up, go home and call this life a wrap? Yeah. And I, I, have you heard of that term fail forward? It's kind of like what you mentioned, right? You're just not giving up insane perseverance. Absolutely. Yeah. 
And how do you define your story in one sentence and in one word? Well, my one word is confidence for sure. That's the game changer. And that's the difference between, you know, where I am today versus where I was 15 years ago. Um, but I guess my, my story would really be, you know, creating confidence by leapfrogging the villains around me. Perfect. And last is how do you define success? Success is different for everybody. For me, success is really about being able to do what I love and having the people that I love around me while taking care of my health. I love it. Heather, thank you so much. This has been wonderful. Really appreciate it. And um, I, I think a lot of people are going to, you know, you know, get a lot of value, receive a lot of value from, from this episode and be inspired. So I'm really thankful for your time. So where can, uh, where sure. can everyone so find my you? website is heathermonahan.com. My book is confidence creator. It's on Amazon and audible and my show creating confidence with Heather Monahan is on Apple podcast, podcast one, anywhere that you find your podcast and please check out my new TEDx talk. It's on YouTube. Just type in Heather Monahan and it will show right up, but it's definitely 10 minutes that could change your life. Fantastic. Heather, I, I'm really humbled and thank, you know, thanks again for your time and really appreciate it. So um, thanks for being part of this podcast and sharing your story with us. And thank you everyone for listening. This is your host, Michael Giorgio on Tales from the Pros. And until next time, thanks guys. Please subscribe to our YouTube page and also follow our social media. Uh, There are links somewhere around here, but uh, we really appreciate it, guys. Thanks for all the support, and I'm going to be giving you awesome content continuously, and we look forward to seeing you soon.